بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر مسلمس ان ٹو ڈیز داوا ریمائنڈر آئی ایم گوئنگ ٹو ٹچ اپان اے ریئلی امپارٹنٹ ٹاپک دا ٹاپک آف دا ایکسکیوز پیپل گیو فار ناٹ شیئرنگ دا میسج آف اسلام وتھ دیئر نیبرس اینڈ کلیگس اینڈ پیپل آف ہیومینٹی سم پیپل دے مے سی دیٹ یو نو سبیل ہاؤ کین آئی کنوے اسلام وتھ ادر پیپل when i myself i am not a good person i am not perfect i am deficient in my knowledge so how can i convey the message with them let me work on myself first i know it's not you with the excuse but some people they may give that excuse some people they may say some muslims that how can we work on the non muslims when look at the condition of the muslims the halat of the muslims let's work on the muslims let's make our muslims better then we can go and convey the message to the non muslims i have five point response my dear muslims to this excuse or to this reasoning but let me start with a really important story the story of of a lady who came to the mec masjid in morton grove and she said i came to the mosque today of my own choice to convert to islam allahu akbar we all got excited yes alhamdulillah then we asked her the question you know what made you interested in islam and she said that i have a muslim friend and my friend's daughter she used to recite for me passage from the quran and that passage was from chapter 2 of the quran verse number 255 ayat al kursi as we muslims know so this non muslim lady she said that i really got attracted with the oneness of god when i listened to this passage i got attracted to the attributes of allah subhanahu wa taala in their perfection when i heard this passage from this young girl and now alhamdulillah she said i am coming today of my own choice to convert to islam so my dear muslims the very first response that we can give based on this story is what the prophet mentioned he said balligu anni walaw aya means convey from me even if it is one single passage one single aya one single truth one single message The Prophet is saying that whatever knowledge that you have, keep on conveying the knowledge, keep on conveying the message with any baggage that you have. As long as you are a Muslim, share the message of Islam. Whatever that you know, keep on sharing the message. My dear Muslims, the second response that I can provide is also from a narration. This is collected in Imam Tabarani's collection, Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He narrated that some companions they came to the prophet and they asked him this question that how can we enjoin good on other people when we don't enjoin all of good on ourselves and how can we forbid people on other people when we don't forbid all of evil on ourselves the prophet said no still enjoin good on other people even if you don't enjoin all of good on yourself even forbid people to do wrong even if you don't forbid all on yourself so the prophet again is saying with all the imperfections still enjoin good and forbid evil and the best good that we can enjoy is to invite humanity to the worship of the creator my dear muslims the first generation of the muslims the best of all the generations they did not had the excuse that how can we how can we convey the message to the people when we ourselves are not perfect If they had the excuse Islam would not have spread to different parts of the world Islam would have been restricted to Mecca Medina Arabia there would not have been expeditions of dawa of sharing the message with humanity the expeditions that went to you know Malaysia Indonesia subcontinent you know Russia and Europe and uh, Africa different parts of the world but they did not had this excuse even in the time of prophet Muhammad peace be upon him not every muslim was a perfect muslim Yes we know this from many many authentic narrations some muslims is still used to commit fornication some minority of the muslims right not everyone by the way some muslims they, they still used to uh, drink them they did not came even to the juma prayer but then they did not stop the prophet from conveying the message to the non muslims it did not stop the prophet just to work on the muslims just be in the masjid and have the weekly halaqas and the conferences for the muslims no when he was with the muslims he used to make sure that they are strong in their iman but when he was with the non muslims on the street or in the public he used to make sure that he invited them to the worship of the one god the one creator conveyed to them the guidance of the quran the way of salvation 
He used to instruct them about what Islam is. Yes. So that is the example, my dear Muslims, that we need to follow. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah, in Surah 33, ayah number 21. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِّمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَسِيرًا that in the person of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have the best example to follow. For those who believe in Allah in the last day and remembers Allah much. So it was the Prophet's example. When he was with the Muslims, make them strong, give them tarbiyah, make their iman strong. But when he was with the non-Muslims, he used to convey the message. He did not stop and just year after year until he passed away just to make the Muslims perfect. Islam is like a two wheels of a bicycle. You need the tarbiyah and then you need the dawa, right? Both together. But point number five is really important, my dear Muslims. Would it ever come a time in your life where you can say that now I'm perfect? That time may never come. Even if one day you think that you are perfect, then, then you're not perfect. You're not humble. You have pride in your heart. Would there ever come a time in which you can say, or the Muslim ummah can say, you know, now the Muslim Ummah is perfect. We don't have any sins. We are sinless. We are perfect. A time may like that will never come. Does it mean that we should stop conveying the message to the non-Muslims? Does it mean that we should deprive the non-Muslims of the guidance of Islam? Does it mean that we should deprive the non-Muslims and humanity from the solutions that Islam has for the problems of humanity? We should not, my dear Muslims. So there is no excuse. And last but not the least, I have seen this on myself, that when I'm conveying the message, it has a reverse and positive effect on myself. I become better when I'm doing dawah. For example, if I'm standing at a dawah booth, if a non-Muslim person comes and asks me this question, Sabil, how many times that you guys pray? If I tell that person that Muslims pray five times a day, the very first one before sunrise, so just can you not imagine that I would be more conscious next time the time for Fajr comes? I would be inshallah waking up, going to a masjid and pray my prayer because now I have mentioned about prayer, about Islam to some person. It has a reverse positive effect on myself. So my dear Muslims, Alhamdulillah, no excuse is a good excuse when it comes to sharing the message. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Nahal, Surah 16, Ayah number 125, that invite all to the way of Allah with wisdom and good preaching and converse with them in ways which are best and most gracious. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability, forgive our shortcomings, make us an ummah which is the best ummah for humanity. So with any baggage that we have, we still convey the message of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.